Ruth and Boaz unite. In our last story, we were introduced to Naomi and Ruth. Naomi lost everything because of the death of her husband and two sons, and the only person to remain faithful to her was Ruth, her daughter-in-law. Both Ruth and Naomi ventured to Bethlehem, Naomi's hometown. There, Ruth worked the fields of a kind and noble man named Boaz. Boaz protected Ruth and showered her with favor. Now we learn of Ruth and Boaz's connection and romance, and their relationship begins a bloodline that would change the world forever, as inspired by the book of Ruth. Hello, I'm Jack Graham, pastor of Prestonwood Baptist Church in Dallas, Texas, with today's episode of the Bible in a Year podcast. In our last episode, we heard how Naomi and Ruth journeyed from Moab to Bethlehem, Naomi's homeland. Ruth had pledged her loyalty to her mother-in-law and embraced the God of Israel as her own God. The two women faced a difficult life in their new home. Both were widowed, and they had no children to care for them. They depended on the gleanings from the fields of harvest, which Ruth worked hard to collect. It was there in the fields that she met a man by the name of Boaz, who showed her great kindness and mercy, knowing what she had done for Naomi. Boaz was a God-fearing man who was wealthy, generous, and protective of Ruth in her vulnerability as a poor foreigner. And today we'll learn of a deepening of this relationship and how Boaz and Ruth will come together to begin a family line that will trace all the way to the fulfillment of God's promised Redeemer, not just for Israel, but for the whole world. So let's listen to this beautiful love story. Ruth worked the fields of Boaz for weeks, and moment by moment she pined after him. It was not his wealth or looks, but the kindness and humility he displayed to all his servants and workers. She spoke often of him to Naomi, and Naomi's heart grew excited for Ruth. She watched her sweet daughter smile as she spoke his name, and welled with excitement before she left to work the fields. As Ruth was speaking, Naomi interrupted her and said, Ruth, you work so hard, Naomi stopped, wiping away a few tears. It is my deepest desire for you to find rest for your heart and hands. You should go to Winnow Barley tonight with Boaz and the rest of his servants. Then, after he has ate and drank, you should stay the night, along with the others in his household. Uncover his feet when he sleeps. That will wake him up gracefully so you two can talk in private. I have a feeling you will know where you stand after that. Ruth did as Naomi said. She washed her hair and put on fresh clothes and departed gleefully to the threshing floor where people were winnowing the barley. She worked and laughed alongside Boaz and the rest of the workers. Every once in a while, Ruth and Boaz would meet each other's eyes for a brief moment. The entire house ate together afterwards, and the people began to retreat to their beds to sleep. Boaz was the last to leave the dining hall. He stumbled around the candlelit room and rested his eyes on a heap of grain. Ruth watched from a distance as Boaz fell into a deep sleep. She gracefully walked over to the foot of where Boaz lay. Slowly and with great care, she uncovered the blanket from Boaz's feet. The slight breeze came in from the window and tickled his toes. Boaz opened his eyes and sat up immediately. All Boaz could see was a dark figure laying at his feet. Ready to draw his sword, he said, Who are you? I am your servant, Ruth, she whispered. Please spread your wings over me as a redeemer. Her heart was beating fast, and her hands sweat slightly out of nervousness. Boaz was known as a kinsman redeemer. In those days, kinsman redeemers could marry a widow in place of a deceased relative in order to take care of her. Ruth was truly asking if Boaz would want to marry her. Ruth could barely see Boaz's smile in the dim candlelight. He sat up more and leaned over towards her and said, In all your time here, you have not chased after all the young men here, whether poor or rich. Instead, you have remained here with me, worked, and been pleasant company. Do not fear, and take heart, because everybody knows you are a worthy and beautiful woman. It could not be seen in the night, but Ruth was blushing. Boaz took her hand and said, I am not the only Redeemer here in Bethlehem. There is another that lives closer to you than I. Tomorrow morning I will speak with him, 
If he does not wish to redeem you, it would be my absolute pleasure. The two of them smiled at each other, with only a dim candle and the crescent moon shining on their faces. Ruth lay there at his feet until morning. Boaz sent her off with more barley for her and Naomi, and then Ruth left early so nobody would see her, lest Boaz lose his honor. Ruth rushed home to bring back good reports to Naomi. The two women laughed and cried with one another. Naomi took Ruth by the cheeks and said, Trust me, the man will not rest until the matter is settled today. And sure enough, Boaz rushed in the morning to meet with the other Redeemer. Boaz sat at the gate of the other Redeemer, waiting for him to come out to meet him. He thought of Ruth while he waited and watched the sunrise. She was beautiful, humble, and kind enough to take care of her mother-in-law when she didn't have to. He sat and daydreamed, looking blankly in the horizon. The other Redeemer walked from his home to the gate and sat beside Boaz. There Boaz spoke of Ruth and Naomi and asked if the man would want to redeem her for himself. The man was willing to redeem Naomi and her property, but unwilling to marry her or Ruth, lest he muddy his own family inheritance. Therefore, Boaz was given permission to marry Ruth and redeem her. Boaz did his best to remain composed and hide his excitement. Very well, I shall redeem her, Boaz said. The two men laughed, and Boaz and Ruth began to make arrangements for their wedding. The time had come, and all of Bethlehem was there to witness the union of Ruth and her redeemer Boaz. Boaz watched as his bride Ruth approached the altar. She was beautiful, despite her brokenness. Ruth looked at her redeemer and groom Boaz. He was strong yet gentle and worthy of her devotion. The two of them were married and experienced the bliss and unity of marriage. Together they conceived a child and named him Obed. He was the father of Jesse, the father of David, Israel's king. Boaz and Ruth's marriage was but a thread in the greater tapestry of God's marvelous plan. One day there would be another wedding of sorts. The imperfect and broken bride would stand before her strong and gentle Redeemer. A beautiful picture that reflected a greater truth was unfolding. A picture of God's love and redemption for His people and their loving devotion to Him in return. We begin today's story with Ruth working hard in the fields, gleaning from Boaz's crops to feed herself and her mother-in-law, Naomi. The kindness of Boaz has moved her, and she is drawn, attracted to this man. Naomi, her mother-in-law, knew her culture well and understood that Boaz could be a kinsman redeemer for Ruth, one who married a widow after a relative had passed on and then care for her. Ruth was now so much more than an in-law to Naomi. She was like a daughter, and Naomi wanted to give her rest from her labor. So Naomi instructed Ruth to wash and anoint herself, in other words, make herself presentable, and then to wear a cloak to hide her appearance. She was to go to the threshing floor and stay overnight near Boaz so that while he slept, she could approach him and uncover his feet and wake him. This would provide quiet conversation for the two of them. Ruth did exactly as she was told, and that night as Boaz slept, she approached him, uncovered his feet, and laid down. Boaz awoke, startled, and asked who was sleeping at his feet. I can only imagine what a surprise this must have been to find a stranger lying so close. This is a very unusual approach to courtship, isn't it? Unusual, but very effective. Ruth made herself known. Then she asked him to spread his wings over her as her redeemer. The words may seem odd to you and me, but to Boaz, the meaning was clear. Ruth was asking him if he would marry her. Boaz was touched by Ruth's request. He knew she could have gone after younger men in town, men who were also wealthy, but she had chosen him, and he was captivated by her. He wanted to say yes to this request. But he was also an honorable man and knew there were other factors in this kinsman-redeemer tradition, issues involving purchase of the land that belonged to Elimelech, Naomi's husband, and that opportunity should first be offered to another potential redeemer who was closer to Naomi's land. Boaz explained all of this to Ruth and said he would love to say yes, but first must speak to the other man. He promised to do so the next morning 
And if the other man was unable or unwilling, he would gladly redeem her. Even here, we see the kindness of Boaz. He was telling Ruth that one way or another, he would see to it that she was redeemed. Ruth returned home excitingly awaiting the outcome. Patiently waiting can be a difficult task. We all know that. But Ruth and Naomi did just that, hopeful but not insistent. Then Boaz finally came with great news. He would be her redeemer. The story, which began with three funerals, would end with a glorious wedding and the birth of a child. Naomi, the woman who wished to be called bitter, found joy again. But God's work in her life was a witness to all. Ruth 4.14 says, Then the women said to Naomi, Blessed be the Lord who has not left you this day without a Redeemer, and may his name be renowned in Israel. And the child that Boaz and Ruth bore? His name was Obed, who would be the father of Jesse, the father of David. David, who would be the great king of Israel, the man after God's own heart, and the progenitor of the Messiah who is yet to come. Dear God, thank you that you have not left us without a Redeemer, one nearer to us and dear to us, our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for showing this story that we might see you. Through your son Jesus, you have redeemed us and bought us out of slavery that we might know the joy of knowing you and overcome even the most bitter circumstances of life. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for being our kinsman redeemer. Amen. Thank you for listening to today's Bible in a Year podcast. I'm Jack Graham of Dallas, Texas, and you can download the Pray.com app and make prayer the priority of your life. It is our prayer that you would know Jesus Christ in a personal way. Jesus and knowing him is the key to understanding the Bible. Jesus is on every page in the pathway of Scripture. So I pray that you would know him and look to him for eternal life. As we see all of these stories, some of them very sordid, we realize just how desperately we all need the Lord. So invite Christ into your life and receive him as your Lord and Savior. I would also encourage you to download the Pray.com app and let others know about this podcast. And if you want more resources on how to know God and experience His presence in your life, be sure to visit jackgraham.org. God bless you. This episode is sponsored by MediShare, an innovative healthcare solution for Christians to save money without sacrificing quality.